Hi, I am going to be assembling a Bike Friday holiday with a mid-drive e-assist kit. Um, we have some other videos that show all the details of how to assemble a holiday out of the box. This one's going to focus more on what's specific to the mid-drive e-assist. So let's get started and see what's in this box. This is a big wrench for assembling the holiday frame parts. We're also going to have a Z-wrench for a 5mm and 6mm for some other frame sections, and then this is a 4mm wrench. And uh, also some paperwork on the components that are on the bike. Let's dig in a little deeper. Right up on the top, we've got wheels, front and rear. Noticing for the e-assist, there is a magnet here, which is a sensor for the cadence, uh, or for, for the speed, rather. Uh, it's part of the, the mid-drive kit. We're going to know what speed we're going. And you'll probably need some scissors for various uh, pieces that will be bubble wrapped. And I'm just going to get as much of the packing material out of there as I can from some of the smaller components. Uh, pretty soon I'm going to be able to find the battery. So this is a lithium-ion battery. We call it the bottle battery. And it comes on a tray which we'll be mounting to the frame pretty soon. So let me see if I can get that off of here for a demonstration. The key opens this up and then it pivots, pivots. And this, uh, this rail right here is going to mount onto the frame while we're assembling the frame. For now, I'll just set this battery aside. Okay, we also found a charger for the battery. Pedals for the bike, some more hardware for assembling the bike, and uh, just get everything that's loose out of this box and get down to the frame sections that have the motor attached. Handlebars are more or less assembled. Maybe a little bit of fine tuning you'll need to do to the angle, but there they are, and they've got the console already installed for the mid drive e assist kit. And then here we've got, um, you know, any bike. Any holiday you buy out of a box is going to have this tricky little spot where the frames nested together to fit into this box as gently as I can. I'm going to take the frame sections apart. There probably will normally be some zip ties you'd have to cut before pulling these apart. So I'm going to be particularly gentle here and notice that there's this, that pickup for that rear wheels magnet that's right there next to these nested frame sections. So as I pivot this around to get them free, I just don't want to force anything past those cables and that sensor. So that's working well. And I've got all of the frame sections free now, so I'm going to kick the box out of the way. Now I've got all of the pieces that came out of the box just kind of laid out in an organized fashion. I'm going to take a moment to make sure that none of the cables are twisted up around frame sections so that as I go to line up these frame sections, I've just got cables passing nicely from one section to another. Same is true here, so I don't want these completely twisted around a frame section. So coming right out of the motor, I've got three cables, and we'll just take a little tour of what, what's going on here. One of these cables travels through a connector all the way up to the front of the bike to the console. So that's a communication cable to the console. The next cable is a small one, and we're going to keep it through the frame here, and it needs to be connected to the speedometer pickup. So I'm reaching back to that back of the frame by the rear wheel. Here's the speedometer pickup. That cable's been tucked out of the way and we need to reconnect it here. There's a white dot on this one that shows me. And then it's like a D shape to push those pieces fully together. So that's where that one goes. And then the third final cable is the power cable to the battery. And we should have a little extra length here. I'll just keep it wrapped around this plate. And then there's a uh, couple sets of connectors just to get us a long enough run to the battery. So now that we've got that, we're going to keep it out of the way and go ahead and mount the battery plate to the frame. To do that, so mounting the battery plate to the frame, um, this particular bike here is actually a prototype, so that bolt here is necessary on my bike, but more likely than not, you just have the two bolts front and back on this plate. Those are the ones we're going to use to mount this battery cartridge 
plate adapter, whatever we're calling this thing. <laughs> so notice that there's some washers embedded in there. That's where these bolts are going to go. There. And there. And then the end with the key goes towards the front and the end with the electrical connections and the dangling cable goes at the back. Line those up with the threaded holes. Careful not to cross thread. Get them started, but keep them loose. And that's going to fit nicely right there. We'll go ahead and tighten the bolts down fully. All right, so with those bolts tight, I'm going to check that the battery fits in there nicely. We've got these uh, tabs at the back end of the battery that are going to fit into the receiver section there on that battery mount. Once they're in there, slides over and lines up, and then locking it with the key will secure it in place. That battery is on there. The only thing we have left to do here is plug it in. So we've got the other end of that power cable coming from the motor, and we're going to plug it in red to red and black to black. And we're all set up. So we've got the battery on the bike, and uh, when you want, when you need to charge the battery, which we actually, I would recommend doing a full charge cycle right now when you receive the bike. Um, you can do that off the bike or on the bike. There's a port on the side of the bike, and there's access to this port even when it's mounted on the bike. So if it's most convenient and, uh, and secure for you to take that battery inside for charging, definitely go for it. Uh, if you've got the bike parked somewhere dry and secure and you can charge it on the bike, that's fine as well. So, so we've got our charger plugged in here. And when we plug this in, we'll see that LED turn orange telling us that uh, it is charging. It'll turn green again once the battery is fully charged. Uh, these batteries have an on-off switch. And so disconnected from the bike, really that on-off switch isn't going to do anything now. But when I turn it on, I can push this button here to check the relative charge status. So when all of those are green, we expect shortly thereafter this light on the charger to turn green as well. All right, so getting the battery back on. Uh, I mentioned this before, but there's those tabs. Sliding it in there. Turning the key to lock it in place. So let's go ahead and turn this system on. There's a power switch here. And once the battery power is turned on, I can turn on the console power. Once the battery power is turned on, we can turn on the console power. There's a power button here. There's also one here at the thumb control. Either one, I'm going to hold down. Console turns on. It's got a little warm-up. And here we are, ready to ride. I've got a plus button and a minus button here on the thumb control. Identical buttons here, plus and minus, that start to change the proportional assist level. When it initially boots up, it's probably going to be a 1. That's how this bike is set up. You can go down to off. And so there's no electric assist there. At one, there's a really moderate amount of assist. And with that cadence sensor that's built into the bottom bracket of the motor, uh, it's basically the harder, faster you pedal, the more the motor's going to help you. And that becomes more and more noticeable at the higher assist levels.